video and video conference without a physically present quorum of the Rock Island City Council due to the disaster declaration issued by Governor Pritzker. Because of this order related to COVID-19 health concerns affecting the state and the city, the mayor has determined that an in-person meeting at City Hall with all participants may not be practical or prudent. Elder persons and staff may not all be physically present at City Hall due to the disaster, and physical attendance at City Hall may be limited. To participate remotely during the public comment or public hearing portion of the meeting, please join by, by phone at 1-430-9010455, PIN 800-861-163-POUND. Okay, and roll call. Alder Person Robinson. Present. Hertz. Here. Gilbert. Present. Swanson. Here. Parker. Here. Poulos. Here. Healy. Here. Mayor Tomes. And is there any public comment? Any remote public comment? Okay. So we will, um, we have two presentations tonight, so we have about an hour to get through both. So hopefully everybody is around 30 minutes or less. <laughs> um, I'll give you a five minute warning when your 30 minutes is almost up. Um, so we'll start with the Carriage House presentation. All right, thank you very much. Uh, we really appreciate the opportunity to share the information on the, on the project. I'm here tonight with the Friends of Hallberg. Uh, we've got Deb Kunsey and Todd Linscott with me. I um, want to start out just getting a little bit of history um, of what's gone on so far. In, in 2016, we, we started a public-private partnership with the Friends of, of Hallberg. Um, since that time, a tremendous amount of work, uh, both financially, sweat equity, and everything in between has been done uh, to the Hallberg Mansion, uh, thanks to the Friends of, of Hallberg, um, to the point where the mansion is now in high demand for rentals, weddings, events. They're booking this facility uh, years out, years in advance, so it's starting to generate the revenue that it, that it needs to build. And we're here tonight to talk about the Carriage House Project, which is going to be a very important project uh, for the Hallberg Estate being financially sustainable. It'll be more rental uh, events. Uh, it'll have a gift shop for, for sales, and it'll also have uh, residential uh, rental that'll make, help make the Hallberg Estate financially sustainable, which is a goal, and also be placemaking. It's a, it's a destination for folks to go, and we've already seen that success um, over the years. We're very fortunate to have uh, Hallberg in city possession. Uh, unfortunately, it did not come with a great big endowment, um, but we are fortunate to have our relationship with the Friends of Hallberg um, and the great work that they do um, that's building it back for future generations. So with that, I'd like to introduce Deb and Todd. Hi. Thanks for having us tonight. Um, as you can see in the first slide, um, there's been a lot done since probably, this is our third presentation, I think, of the of the carriage house um, and just from the outside uh, there there used to be a ton of bushes that just covered the whole front of it that's all been taken down we're restoring the Jens Jensen landscape uh, the doors actually work now uh, the carriage house doors they open um, and where are you going Todd <laughs> it's going by itself uh, the second floor is a 2,600 square foot apartment uh, that will be used as an Airbnb. Uh, we originally had thought that we might do a long-term rental um, or corporate rental, but with the pandemic, the business plan has, has kind of changed on that. There's not as much demand for corporate, so we've decided to go back to the Airbnb. So um, I guess you can go to the next yes. one. This is just kind of um, our capital campaign um, slogan. It's what we do there. Go ahead. So as John said, we were formed in 2016. Look how young we were, John. There's, we have a 10-year operational agreement with the city. Uh, we're going on, what, six years now? Um, it's been very successful. Um, it's, there's been a lot of, of, of hard work put into it. Um, our visitors have increased. Um, we're getting, we actually got a, a tour about three weeks ago from a couple that came in from St. Louis. We said, what brought you to town? Because we always like to ask them. 
the house, they said. So we've, uh, they're, they've come from all over. Um, the volunteer hours. So since 2016, we've had 23,751 volunteer hours. That does, there's a, a group that actually does data on it that says volunteers are worth money. And they're worth about, I think this year, that changes every year. This year they were worth $29, I think, and 19 cents. So overall, if you calculate those hours, it comes out to about $618,000 worth of volunteer hours. Um, what was the increased revenue generation? Just the tours and the, okay, go ahead. Uh, we had shown this slide before for the tourism, um, and it says everything you really know, need to know on that slide. Um, nature and parks seem to score very high. Yeah, we hit all the, we hit all the parameters for local tourism, mm -hmm. uh, oh, state excited. tourism, sorry, state tourism, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, we're trying to find some of the national matrix, uh, metrics so that we can, we can kind of add those once and then once the um, once uh, um, uh, the um, oh, once the Quad City uh, Chamber changes their matrix and we'll update the uh, material so our phase one is the expanded programming and income generation for the first floor of the carriage house so the carriage house there's two sides to the carriage house one is uh, the auto room, which is the 1,400 square foot space. Um, and the carriage room is 900 square feet. Uh, the um, auto room will be used for uh, meeting space during the week, for programming, um, and then events on the weekends. Um, the carriage room will have the ADA bathroom, the bar, um, and then the stable is going to be used as a gift shop. Um, right now, we're currently working with Girl Scouts, the STEAM programs. Uh, we have, every Thursday, we have a um, garden program where we have hired a gardener that comes and works with our volunteers. Um, and then it will progressively go into the terrace garden, which will be the children's art garden. In the auto room, um, a lot of this stuff has been completed. This, this is actually uh, projects that was never in the scope of the proposal. So we've had to do things on our own. Um, so the window repair and glass is completed in the auto room. Uh, we've put in the new egress door. The lighting's been completed. The floor refinish has not been done yet, of course, because we still have uh, plumbing and electrical to do. Um, the carriage door repair, that needs tweaked a little bit, but they do open, so that is, that is a good thing. Um, the paint and paying for the, the labor to paint, everything is completed. Alarm and security, um, we've just spent close to almost 10000 on the alarm and the security system. We put cameras on the outside of the carriage house because the mansion never had cameras and people walk through all the time. And we haven't had a lot of vandalism, not really. Um, we've had some graffiti at the bridge, but overall it's, it's done pretty well. We don't have a lot of vandalism at Hauberg. Um, but um, there's a lot of cars that park there in the parking lot. Um, they did, when we were taking an egress door out, there was a door that, uh, when we had the um, plywood up, they kicked it. If we would have had the security system working at that time, we would have found out who did it. Um, so that, that is almost complete. They're having, a, um, and also the internet is also, we've also paid for that during, with that whole system. Um, restoration of uh, the radi well the radiators. So the carriage house and the auto house have overhead heaters in them, and all the radiators were taken out. 
We've bought all the radiators, but one of the probably the mo biggest expense is going to be all mechanical in the, in that side. So they're sitting there, but they're not hooked up. Um, plumbing for the heating system, uh, electrical service and wiring upgrade. The what's the electric? The electrical was has been upgraded. The service has. The service has already, um, but not the inside of the building. Um, and then um, the air conditioning um, will have to be put in both sides. Just a few pictures of ongoing work. Um, the lights are up. Public Works helps us a lot. Um, they're putting in the new uh, pad in front of the carriage house doors. They were pretty. They were very dangerous, um, even with. Even with 20 people walking in there, I was, I was afraid to let people go in because they were definitely stumble and fall, so uh, they fixed those for us. So the Hubbard carriage house, the carriage room. So the radiators we've also bought for in there, the light fixtures are in uh, that room, the painting and paint are completed. Um, Window glass replacement actually is done in the carriage room, not done in the stable. So all of the windows were plexiglass. So they've all been restored back to the, to the original glass. Um, we got a grant from Landmarks Illinois uh, to complete that for just the glass. But each window takes about eight to 10 hours to do and that's all been done with volunteer. Um, the reception bar is almost done except for plumbing. Um, appliances are all bought. Uh, the ADA bathrooms, miles, for the CDBG. Um, and the heating and cooling for the whole first floor. So the total project, including the air conditioning, is 337000 CDBG is going to be paying 100,000 of that. Uh, we've raised 106,000, and we have spent 76,000 to date. And all that 76,000, like I said, was on projects that were not going to be covered under the proposal. As you can see in the top picture, the carriage came back from Bainbridge Island about a month ago. Um, that was John Jr.'s carriage, so the family said it needs to come back, so one of our board members who's a family member went and picked it up and brought it back, and now we have it. Um, the urn, the urn, John gracefully gave us that. <laughs> that is from Spencer Square, which was the huge park in downtown Rock Island in 1890, and it's, we think it's the only artifact left of that park. So it's sitting in there until it can be renovated, which is a $30,000 re restoration, but it's protected, so we're happy to have it. So the second phase of this, which, which really has nothing to do with the ARPA money or the CDBG, this is money that we are going to raise privately, is for the driver's apartment. It is a 2,600 square foot apartment. Um, it's in pretty good shape. The, the, the floors need to be redone. It does need air conditioning, but it will generate quite a bit of money for us. Um, and it will also, it's like with, with a lot of the weddings that we have and even just visitors, um, they're always asking for places to stay. And so it gives them an opportunity to, to stay at a historic property and do other things around the city. Yeah, you can handle that one. So just the last couple bits. Um, again, all these projects are to increase sustainability for the estate. So here, uh, the Terrace Food Garden, again, it's a three-acre food garden. The goal there is to take 95% of the, of the design, restore it to what it was, uh, but interlace with that uh, children's, each, each children's themes through each of the, uh, of the terraces. Uh, we think this was the largest food garden that, um, that Jensen did. 
He's just showing you again parts of the pieces. Uh, the oak that you can't quite see at the very top uh, is still there. It's one of the Bailey pasture field oaks. And then you see the, the five rows. Just real quick, one of the one rows, uh, we're trying to do a um, Illinois children's poetry walk. So the outside uh, edge would be different vignettes uh, from local artists. Could it's meant to be dynamic. Nothing's meant to stay there very long. Um, so. Um, Shel Silverstein is technically a, uh, an Illinois author, which could be really kind of fascinating and possibly scary for kids. It always <laughs> was for me. But again, there's a huge number of, 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 of Illinois authors, children's authors that are, that are to choose from. The second one, uh, again, the third um, um, terrace would be a ferry walk through uh, the plum trees in a sense. Uh, it has a connection to the house in the sense that uh, uh, she paid for the one of the designers to paint fairy murals in the house after the need uh, the sorry the the Cottingsley fairies from 1917 uh, we still have one of those uh, murals are still there uh, there are lots of children's gardens that do these kind of themed walks and you get thousands of kids show up on a Saturday for one of these little adventures from all over the place so it's it's uh, it's quite amazing and frightening for some of us uh, <laughs> for the amount of kids that can show up uh, again, for long term, for all of these projects, uh, the uh, bringing that carriage house online uh, opens up a huge amount of space for us. So it's not just forcing the, the mansion to do all of the work. Uh, there are a lot of comparable areas in Davenport where they've taken a, a radiator garage. They get $3,500 for six hours for you know a big industrial space room that's not much bigger than what we have. Uh, plus, we have a parking and gardens and a much more a big picture. So again, for both of these, they'll bring in larger events, multiple events for us, uh, increased tax revenue. Uh, the driver's apartment will allow us to diversify what we can do. It's another revenue stream for us. The potential income is ninety to one hundred twenty thousand, uh, just because the weddings are are larger weddings, bring in more money. Um, the number of places that we can what we can offer for a three bedroom. Uh, place is is quite amazing for the uh, for what Airbnb will charge for for that location and then again the, the children's garden uh, for that a lot of that is um, bringing in a different crowd to the estate uh, again you're bringing more children uh, with some of these uh, children's gardens that have these kind of themed areas uh, they are recognized people travel do their whole um, um, uh, travel plans around some of these premier gardens and we're we're figuring that if this comes to fruition with the design intact with the orchard intact uh, with all the different vignettes you can create it's a huge benefit uh, and draw potential for the for the estate and, and for Rock Island uh, for the what uh, what you see what some of the other gardens have done in Maine and uh, 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 George's couple of the other ones I'm thinking about some of the gardens have done these uh, these very enriched uh, children's gardens and then so just again come visit we're willing to we have given people three-hour tours we promise not to do that to you <laughs> but it's not out of the realm of impossibility Todd, Todd was there and it was spent about two and a half hours yeah. thank you for coming Good. really appreciate that also one thing that we haven't said was from 2016 to date, we've raised $700,000 for Hauberg. Um, significant amount of money. Uh, we have a lot of support from the community. And hopefully it just keeps getting better. So um, I would like to do some thank yous if it's OK. Um, Miles, thank you for the CDBG. It's been a long road. But well, we did it. We're there. OK. John, um, for working tirelessly on the Carriage House project and believing in the public-private partnership when some people said it would never work. And I, we, we, both have, we both heard that quite a bit at the very beginning, and understandably so. Um, it was, uh, I don't think it's ever really been done successfully. And we're, we're really proud of that. Mike? Bartels and Luke Van Landigen. Um, they help us with numerous projects at the estate. Um, they put in air conditioners. They hang lights in the carriage house. They help with the ponds. And they always seem to find a time 
to make for us to get these things done. And to the community and the volunteers, um, it's a never ending support. They really do a, they do support Hauberg well. They, they love Hauberg, they, they, just, they just do. I mean, I, and it shows. I mean, we've, we've done a lot of work in six years and we couldn't do it without our volunteers, that's for sure. So, and thank you for having us tonight and hopefully we continue to have this very successful public-private partnership. Well, I'm excited with what you're doing because I am one of those people that have traveled around to the other children's mm -hmm. gardens in different states and it's very exciting. Mm -hmm. so, thank you. Does anyone have any questions? I don't have any questions, but thank you to both of you for all you've done. You're welcome. For saving the estate and to all the volunteers who have just done mm -hmm. so much. Yeah, we have, we have one volunteer who is an older gentleman that's retired. He worked, he volunteered 161 hours in July. Oh my gosh. And bought a truck because he now works at Harburg. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, he has a key. He can get in anytime he likes. And he, he, he basically, he does so much landscaping work for us. And when he asked, when he said, Deb, I need to work smarter, not harder. And I'm like, okay, what do you need? <laughs> and so we make sure that, that his job is easier. Well, it's just beautiful. I was there last week for an event. It's just beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Jerry, your turn. Perfect. Thanks, Tim. Um, I think this is a perfectly matched study session in regards to some of the things that are being invested into the neighborhoods in Rock Island. I'm really excited to talk to you all about what we're planning to do and hope that there's, if there's any questions, we can answer them um, to your satisfaction. Last year, um, Martin Luther King Center received an incredible gift, a six-figure gift from a donor. And it was meant to be used for something transformational. And I know that's a term you guys have been throwing around quite a bit. So. The donor was completely aligned with your vision moving forward. Brought the concept to our board and to our team to come up with an idea of how to use that six-figure gift. And the idea that came out of all that work was a STEAM lab, science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics lab at the Martin Luther King Center. Um, and I've sent you this, this concepts sheet that we have thus far, uh, made for us by Edwards Creative. And it's darned exciting to see this because not only has the team participated in this project, our kids have participated as well. They provided some inputs on some things they'd like to see. And one thing they didn't get is some of this furniture because, well, all I can see is an opportunity for them to propel themselves through the air. That's not what the lab is about. But I don't want to get sidetracked. Um, the lab itself, here's the concept as far as how it will be um, formatted. We'll be able to provide the kids with an opportunity for programming for robotics, for circuit completion, for uh, drones, for a variety, a laser cutting, and for 3D printing. And that's just the beginning of the, the concept for this lab. We're working with uh, Edwards Creative and a few others to help us get together the entire package to figure out what it's going to cost in the end. But we're already reaching out to other potential donors, potential supporters, and each time we do, it's a level of excitement we've never seen before. So we're hoping that we can not only gain financial support, but gain their expertise. Uh, for instance, it was maybe three or four months ago that the uh, that John Deere engineers came and worked with our kids on a STEM project, and we introduced this concept to them, and they are incredibly excited. So I'm hoping we can get moving very quickly with this. But here are some other things. That's a Lego wall with not your typical Legos, at least not the ones I grew up with, but these are robotic Legos. Um, so they can build things that actually move and do things. Um, there's also a snap circuit wall where they uh, create um, Lights that, lights that come on, spinning helicopter wheels, but even more than that. We plan on having a smart board involved 
welcoming warm furniture, a welcoming warm environment, and ultimately a state-of-art place. And I want to be uh, very clear, it's not just for the kids at the Martin Luther King Center. That's not the entire vision. The entire vision would that this would be a resource for the entire community. I mean, if it's fully realized, we would see things like Saturday's uh, parties there by, with kids. Or during the week, we would see Rock Island um, Milan School District utilizing this as maybe a quasi-classroom for one of their courses. And we would want it to be open for that. The model that we're planning on adopting for this is to, con to contract with an individual to run our lab, to run their business out of there, but to also teach our kids and our staff how to do that very same thing so that we can have sustainability moving forward. Yes, there will be an opportunity to charge that individual or that business a, a fee for occupying the space, but also we would be able to charge a fee for utilizing the space from others. And we certainly at the King Center have found the real balance between what is affordable and what is the market rate and what in between is going to work for our community. Our banquet room is an incredible example of that. So we think with um, the experience that we have, the reputation that we have, we're going to be able to have a revenue generating uh, facility as well as an opportunity to continue modifying it with our corporate and other sponsors as well. There's some of that furniture that's probably never going to happen, but it'll at least be comfortable. <laughs> but that's the vision. That's the business, business model. That's what we're hoping to do. At this point in time, I'm getting together all the folks that I know would have some good input, good insight for us. But before moving forward, I want to make sure that this council is well aware of it. Um, this is a building that is owned by the city of Rock Island, so it's probably a good idea to let the landlords know we're going to do some major renovations in the building. Uh, give you an opportunity to let me know if you have any concerns or reservations, but also to provide you all another great story to tell about our unique Rock Island, about how we invest in our people, how we care about our neighborhoods, and how we're also having an eye for innovation and transformation in the future. So with that, I welcome any opportunity to discuss the project. Okay. You're, you're taking existing space in the King Center and converting it? I'm so glad you asked that question. The answer is yes. And it seems that the stars align for this because the space that we're going to renovate is currently being occupied by the Two Rivers Y. But as we all well know, they are planning to be moving into a new facility in Rock Island. They're not going to leave us completely, but they need a smaller footprint. So we're moving them over to a space that's currently being evacuated by another tenant just recently closed on a new facility. So. Yes, we will renovate, uh, renovate the space um, currently occupied by them. Have you reached out to uh, educators to, to present some of these programs like the, uh, the drone programs, the engineering uh, opportunities? Not yet, but yes, we will. I would re really like to have a concrete uh, timeline on when we're going to get this done so that we can start inviting the ideas and the expertise in. I think it's a phenomenal idea. I'm so glad you guys are doing it. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Well. Thinking about doing it. <laughs> well, thank you all for your time. I didn't take a half hour. Awesome. <laughs> Can't believe they're both done in half an hour. <laughs> all right. Well, if no one has anything else, then I need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Roll call. Alder Person Swanson. Aye. Parker. Aye. Poulos. Aye. Healy. Aye. Robinson. Aye. Hurt. Yes. Gilbert. Aye. Meeting adjourned. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just in time, here comes the mayor. Mm -hmm.